Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, selamat pagi. So, can you guys hear me? Yeah. At the back. So I have to use the mic because uh, we are recording. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I am going to um, uh, talk uh, to uh, to you about the the platform that uh, we are uh, using. So uh, the platform that we are using is um, Twitterless. So as um, Dr. Para uh, said just now, Twitterless is um, I would say it's the Europe's answer to uh, EAX and Coursera. Okay, because uh, those those two those two uh, platform, the big uh, most platform, are US based. So um, in 2012, uh, FutureLearn FutureLearn was um, an offshoot of the Open University uh, UK. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the National uh, British Library, actually. So uh, this, these two organizations started Futureland, and um, they hired a few people from BBC, actually, to start um, the, with the development. So that's why uh, you will see that, um, uh, and you will later find out that uh, they do uh, quite um, uh, important or quite um, strict um, quality control because they are BBC staff. So if you watch uh, documentaries and you compare National Geographic and BBC, you will know. Okay. So um, FutureLearn is uh, started in 2012. They approach uh, UM uh, in 2015. Okay. Uh, and uh, what during that time, uh, what they do is they go around uh, around the world. And they find the top universities of uh, each country. Okay, so we were actually named uh, together with UKM. So they approached us, and they approached UKM. So UKM obviously they went with um, uh, open learning. So we went with future. So that is uh, a bit of story uh, behind that. And in 2017, uh, we opened our first course uh, in the platform. Uh, during that time, the, the contract was. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's essentially a free contract. That means uh, uh, there is the license fee that they charge, but they don't charge it uh, uh, on the university. So the the, the, the the stipulation of the contract is once the university obtains uh, a revenue of ten thousand pounds, then you get a uh, fee cap. So that's that was the old story. So in 2019, we started uh, to negotiate a new contract with uh, the platform, and uh, in three, so uh, we started we started this year uh, for three years. So the actually the license fee, the platform fee is uh, ten thousand pounds a year. Okay, so, uh, ten thousand uh, uh, British pound a year. Okay, so we were approached by EDX. Uh, EDX wants a one-time donation of uh, 500,000 US dollars and and on top of that every year uh, a fee renewal uh, or a partnership renewal license of how, how many thousands I don't know so so uh, actually uh, in the MOOC platform uh, the business model they have there are many uh, ways of, of doing business okay so uh, that's why uh, we sort of eventually went with uh, future Coursera they would not touch Universities below um, uh, top fifty in the world. Okay, but uh, uh, this year suddenly they say, okay, let's come and <laughs> <laughs> master computer. So, uh, so I think yeah, uh, people are trying to like uh, uh, put in their their seats of business model uh, everywhere now. Okay, so that's a um, uh, bit of a story with the platform. Okay, so so uh, more. Um, so I think um, uh, as you know. So it stands for Massive uh, Open Online Course. It's online course based on open access to uh, education via website. So can you just use that and click on the next button? Uh, so I'm using uh, Microsoft Suite. So it's part of the uh, Microsoft account that we have. Okay. So what differentiate uh, uh, an online course, a MOOC with OER, open access, uh, Everything is actually it has a start and end date. 
So that's why uh, when you develop your course later, we want you to look at um, uh, where the LO comes in, what the topics are that's going to be taught in the course, so that then you can uh, program or uh, you can um, determine what will be the start date for your course and what will be the end date for your course because both courses are uh, moderated. Okay, so there will be activities to complete to be completed and also uh, some assessments that uh, will be done. And uh, of course, which uh, begs the question: um, do, do they want a certificate or not? So if they want a certificate, they will need to complete activities. Take, take part in the discussion uh, uh, and also uh, then complete the, the minimum amount required so that then they can uh, be eligible to purchase the certificate. Okay, so next. Sorry, that's so long, but. Click can, click can then. Okay, so, so uh, I'm going to go uh, uh, to my today. So, this is actually. Uh, the history of MOOC. It generally starts with uh, OER, okay? Open Education Resource. Uh, but then, um, a MOOC started uh, in uh, Stanford in 2000, uh, in 2008, uh, probably. Uh, and that was um, done uh, via an AI course. Okay? So, uh, the, can you click on next? Okay? Uh, so the book started. Uh, oh, sorry, not 2000. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, 2011 when um, uh, two lecturers from Stanford taught their course online to 160,000 online participants. That's um, uh, AI, okay, artificial artificial intelligence. So for uh, record, FutureLearn uh, holds uh, the the highest number of participants. Uh, uh, of MOOC course uh, when they open uh, an IX course, yes. a preparation for IX course, and that course has 400,000 learners in one session. Okay, so that is uh, the biggest uh, IX course uh, ever done. Okay, so next. Okay, so uh, when you talk about MOOC, okay, there's actually so in the literature there will be two types. Okay. And that actually differentiate between the, the platform. So uh, the first one is an X book or uh, called a scal scalability book. Uh, it focuses on scal scal scalability and what you will find. So these are normally book done by Coursera. Okay? So um, and what they do is they upload a lecture recording. Okay, and then they have lecture notes. So it's, so it's similar like um, a, a, a residential course, but they upload the lecture online. So you will find that uh, in Coursera, especially the older courses, there will be one hour uh, recording of lecture, and then uh, followed by uh, lecture notes and then activities. So the, 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 the learners have to complete everything. And that, that makes the, the learning hours for Coursera uh, courses quite high. Because you have to go through like one hour, one hour or two hour lecture before uh, then you need to then go through the, the learning materials. And I don't know whether uh, whether you um, uh, notice or not. I will not sit through um, three thirty minutes uh, of lecture in front of the computer without uh, ever getting sleepy. So uh, imagine having to like sit through a uh, one hour lecture. So I would suggest that you don't do that. Don't uh, please don't uh, record a, a one hour lecture and put it on uh, a book course. Okay. So the second one, which is uh, the the basis of uh, the the principle or uh, the concept that's uh, done by uh, FutureLearn and uh, a few other uh, MOOC platforms are uh, the the CMOOC. CMOOC is uh, based on community, based on peer learning. Uh, and you'll find that uh, the learning happens not by the learners listening to the lectures, but they learn uh, with their peers. Okay? Uh, so, uh, one of the course that we had, uh, Introduction to Malay Language, we first started the course 
thinking that uh, we wanted to market the course for people who wants to come to Malaysia uh, to become a tourist. So they, they need to learn a few bits of uh, the language, isn't it? So when we first started opening the course uh, in, back in 2017, what we found out, uh, the learners are not really people from outside. So they, they, are, they are people from outside. But the majority are actually expats living in Malaysia, wanting to learn uh, the language. Uh, and so uh, what makes it a, a social uh, expat of that, the, the peer learning? Because people are actually living in Malaysia, they can actually um, uh, help each other and they relate uh, information uh, what happens. So uh, one learner was in Penang, one learner lives in, in, in KL. So they, they, they have that shared experience where they learn, learn together. And our educators from APM doesn't really have to um, teach them much because uh, we found out there's one um, learner who's actually from Indonesia uh, kept helping out people with the, the grammar, with the language, with the, um, with the, uh, the, the, yeah, the language and also the, uh, the, the learning of the play language. So uh, our, our learners uh, from outside doesn't really have to like, go through of, uh, and listen to the, the lectures so much. Okay, because they are peers who are uh, actually helping out. So I think uh, that is the one thing that we want you to design your course so that it uh, reduces your workload during the uh, monitoring and also a moderating period. Okay, so design the course so that it becomes a peer learning course. Okay, and our instructional designers will uh, hopefully have uh, suggestions to um, help you to that effect. Okay, uh, next. Ah, okay, okay. How do you do? <laughs> okay, so, um, so uh, that's uh, the thing I was uh, talking about, constructivist approach to MOOCs. Alright, so uh, since we already have a uh, MOOC course since 2017, uh, uh, of course we have uh, our own uh, MOOC logo. Okay, um, and uh, for during the COVID-19 um, uh, crisis, uh, I think it's uh, early March or April, uh, Fusioner uh, sort of came and uh, said, you, we, we actually have a program. Uh, we want to propose a program where uh, we will let uh, our staff and our students uh, learn courses for free. Okay? So uh, we've uh, publicized it in uh, quite a number of UEM, UEMs, um, uh, publication channels, uh, uh, promotion channels, and uh, it's still going on uh, at least until so September. Okay, uh, but uh, we don't know uh, how long uh, they will extend it. But you can actually go in, register yourself, uh, and when you click uh, that link, it, it will actually bring you to a, a registration page where you need to put in your UM mail uh, address account. Okay, and then it will, it will make you uh, eligible to learn a few courses that is um, uh, the same model which is uh, free to learn, pay to certify but the certification will come free for you okay, you and also uh, the students also uh, have this uh, facility okay, so what is the uh, educational model proposed by uh, the uh, platform okay so uh, actually the, the, the pedagogy for uh, FutureLearn is based on uh, uh, Diana Loredat's uh, conversational framework. So this is actually a professor in UCL. Okay? Uh, there is a, if you look in your uh, folders, you will see uh, these cards. Okay? These cards have two sides. Okay. They have the front side, which um, uh, is showing uh, what kind of activities that you and uh, you can design, and then at the back will be the um, what the learners will do. Okay, uh, what will be the description of that uh, activity, and also what uh, is your discussion uh, for. So you can actually design uh, the the course uh, with the help. 
uh, of this card. So what you do is uh, if uh, you have a learning uh, learning stack, okay. So for each, each of the learning stack that you uh, wanted to design, then you put in. So uh, first I want them to practice, and then I want them to read. Okay. So you don't have to use everything in one in, in one unit or one one topic, but you can actually choose and find which one that you think will be beneficial for the students. Okay, so let's look at the uh, the model. Uh, so this is by uh, the professor himself. Can you put? Uh, yes. So, yeah. can you run it again? Hopefully, you can hear it now. There will be uh, quite a number of um, uh, steps, and it uh, uh, lends itself into online learning very, very nicely. You can actually um, go to the to UCL's website and find um, uh, ABC uh, and try and search ABC to VLE, uh, and then uh, you will actually um, be introduced to uh, this uh, approach uh, by uh, uh, Professor Laurita. Okay, uh, can we? Skip. You go to the next one. Okay, so uh, so that is the class that I showed you. Next one. Okay. So this will be so. Um, <coughs> let's make this work. Uh, not just for the university, but what's in it for you? Okay. So. Just now we uh, we talked about uh, uh, KPI. Yes, uh, you might get the uh, some cut of the, the 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 money from the profit. Yes, but let's make this work for you as an academic. Okay, so uh, this is where the courses are where you show your expertise. What are you expert at? Okay, show your expertise. Uh, make it known uh, to uh, the world. Okay, um, make your research visible. Okay, so uh, this is what we academic feed on, isn't it? Like research, so that because research is more research. So make your research visible, so that when then we can get uh, network. Okay, so that we can do uh, more uh, uh, impactful research. Promote your book. So if you have a book, if you write a book. Then you use the book as a reference, so that's a, that's a, like a very uh, soft way of introducing, introducing your book in the, the platform. Or you can even um, add the uh, one of the steps. So I actually read, um, uh, write this book. So you might want to buy it. Okay. <laughs> um, a network for research and also conference presentation. So once you are known outside uh, of the circle and um, uh, within the, the, the global uh, area, then of course you can get uh, you can get network for more research, for more uh, project, international projects, and also conference presentation. So people would then um, ask you, so okay, so you presented this topic on uh, an online platform. So would you uh, care to come and uh, present this to uh, our conference in uh, in Bangalore, for example, or in in Norway? Okay. Um, and use this to the benefit of uh, your residential students. So what I was saying, what I'm saying is that what I'm meaning is that 
since for example uh, you designed it to work within the 14 bit spots, isn't it? So, uh, so this is a dream. You use the uh, online portion of the course to link up your student with outside people. People from different geographical, uh, geographical regions. And uh, you use this opportunity so that then uh, they would benefit from those people who are learners from the outside. Uh, there is this one course uh, done by uh, Professor Mustaq uh, Atami. So he's now uh, the, the provost of uh, Herald Walk, um, Putrajaya. So uh, he, he says he's actually the, uh, before this he was dean uh, at Taylor's, uh, Dean of Engineering. So uh, he used his um, book course to link up his residential student with people from uh, all over the world and uh, he uses the, 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 the learners uh, to uh, how do I say this? to benefit the students by getting the students to understand a real world problem that they can solve they can help solve so uh, they, uh, he uses his group of students so uh, in the group that uh, they form inside the, the MOOC platform uh, there will be a few of these students and then a few of uh, the outside learners who can be anybody it can be a retired uh, geography professor it can be uh, a school children from Kodiak uh, uh, okay? it can be a, a professional engineer who uh, is working in, um, uh, in Nairobi for example and uh, uh, from this uh, course we get the students to understand a real world problem of the learners that they are trying to uh, solve and they help them solve that, that problem using the students so that is um, how powerful uh, uh, this course can be so you can, it is up to your hand to design it that way okay so um, uh, let's move on to the next part of my uh, presentation can you can you please um, go to this uh, link okay so enter the link into your um, laptop okay so this one let me share it uh, properly Okay, so it's a little bit it, it's a little bit um, small there, but it's actually uh, a pretty slash mc at UF. a Dropbox paper uh, link that will bring you to this document so I see that there are already uh, a few uh, people uh, inside very good okay okay so uh, in there I give you uh, I also give the link to uh, the future campus uh, program you can um, uh, click on that um, uh, later okay uh, so the first um, task that i want you to do is i want you to think about uh, the big question okay i i know some of uh, some of you are uh, given uh, a, a show a show here or a set here uh, with uh, your residential course okay so it can be um, introduction to um, uh, data mining okay. the cost can be as boring as that the, the name, sorry, not the cost the, the name. <laughs> but I want you to um, name it as how you would name your journal paper that you want people to read do you, do you understand uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say? Okay. so make it as um, 
uh, catchy as possible. So that people would want to um, read that paper or uh, watch that uh, the uh, the the course online. Okay. So what is your big question? So uh, it can be uh, as boring as my course. Uh, uh, this is pathology, so nobody know what, what that is. Okay? But I want to think of uh, what would be the big question or big central idea that you want to show in the course. So that then it becomes a really, really catchy name for your course. Okay? So you'll be able to actually type um, in that. So just uh, go and put your cursor down here. Okay? And then start typing what will be the name of your boss. Para, can you start what will be uh, the name of your boss? What will be the catchy name for uh, your boss? Yes. So I'll give you um, uh, five minutes to think and to start putting in your uh, name of the boss. So it can be um, it can be as long as you want it.
Uh, if you have any questions, so we can move on to the next part, which is uh, the tea break. Okay. How long do we have for tea break? Until until eleven. Okay, until eleven. So uh, by eleven o'clock, you should uh, already have that information. So uh, you not you will not take one hour to do it, isn't it? So uh, uh, take what food that you need. Huh? Okay. Uh, take what food that you need. Okay, and then uh, you can actually start uh, working on the, uh, going to one uh, future level course uh, from any university, it doesn't really matter. But then you can actually uh, give comments in the drop of paper. I will uh, update the drop of paper to uh, make my, the, the second part or the second task appear again, so then you can write underneath. Alright, thank you very much. So uh, you are free to go to uh, have your uh, evening. Thank you. So now uh, I've switched the, the audio, uh, the, the speaker source to the speakers, uh, the big ones. So you should be able to hear it properly. The website, that's learning through acquisition. It's very common in education. It creates the opportunity for the learner to develop concepts, but it doesn't require them to do anything. All the other types of learning activity do. If the learner is going to the teacher or the library or the internet to find out something, that's learning through inquiry. It's a different way of reading the book, more under the control of the learner. And they have to come up with a question, evaluate what comes back, search again. It's a more active learning process, enabling that conceptual process to keep developing. If the learner is asking questions of other learners or answering their questions, exchanging ideas, challenging each other's arguments, that's learning through discussion. Listening and responding, articulating and arguing, they're all opportunities for the concept to develop. And if the teacher sets up a learning environment with a task goal, the learner then has to generate an action, interpret the feedback, and maybe think about the relevant concept, and try again to get near the goal. This is learning through practice. And suppose you get the students working together on a project where they have to produce a shared output, maybe a diagram or a definition or a design, a report. This is learning through collaboration. It's different from discussion. Having to produce a shared output means they have to negotiate their ideas in practice until they agree. So in the process, they're challenging each other and providing peer feedback to develop the best output they can. Even more opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. And finally, when students are producing something for the teacher to evaluate, that's learning through production. Again, it may be a plan, a website, a performance, a theory, an analysis, but having to produce a public presentation of what they've learned is as important as getting feedback from the teacher. Many opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. Together, all six types of learning activity cover most of what you're ever likely to ask us. Okay. Okay, so that is uh, the, the, the theory behind the pedagogy uh, within uh, the future. But honestly, it's actually what we uh, design uh, or should design in our courses uh, in any course that we, have, that, we are, that we are teaching, isn't it? The collaboration, the, the inquiry, uh, all of them. Uh, is what the one that helps uh, our learners learn. Okay. So uh, throughout the uh, presentation between me uh, and Farah, you might uh, notice something. Okay. We refer to uh, two types of um, uh, students. Okay? The first one we say students. So if we, uh, we mention student, it means the students that we have in the university. And then uh, the other terminology that we use are learners. Isn't it? So learners and students are two uh, different groups. Learners are people who uh, went into the course of uh, the people who are going into the course from outside the university. Okay, so they have different motives 
to go into um, uh, learning. Okay, but mostly, uh, what differentiate uh, the learners and also the students are uh, their willingness. Okay, people will not go into an online course because they have to. They go in there because they want to. Okay, but nobody is compelling them to. Uh, you go to Futurelearn and find uh, a course on uh, uh, planting rice, isn't it? Somebody who wants to learn how to plant rice will actually go uh, and find an online course on planting rice. Okay, it's similar to what you are doing with uh, YouTube, isn't it? I want to learn how to cook a uh, cheese cake. So you either go to uh, uh, a recipe book or uh, it's easy. I just watch a YouTube and just follow whatever steps that uh, the, uh, the the chef are doing. So so that is how uh, we differentiate different uh, the, the learners and the students. Okay, but we make that differentiation as something that we can leverage on because uh, when the learners we know that they want to learn the subject, and then the students who are there maybe uh, they want to maybe. Uh, you have to do it because uh, uh, Dr. Azhar is asking them to go and use my book to uh, learn uh, biomechanics, uh, biomechatronics or whatever uh, it is. Okay? And you use that, you leverage that, um, uh, that interaction that's uh, in the, the platform to, to benefit your students and also to benefit the uh, learners who are uh, from the outside. Okay, so let's... Um, Go back to our uh, course just now. So this, uh, I wanted to show you uh, the course that we had uh, done uh, with APM. There are two courses. So one is um, introduction to the language, and the next one is um, uh, Islamic calligraphy. Okay. Uh, so uh, do you remember uh, back in um, 2000? Um, in there was this fiasco on uh, calligraphy in school. So oh, yes. We wanted to uh, be uh, a little bit cheeky and just uh, open this course up. <laughs> and then uh, the NCC said, oh, please don't add fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this is the course that we, we did. Okay, it's having uh, calligraphy. So that's this course, so this is done by your colleagues in APM. This is the one. Assalamualaikum. My name is Anis Amin Bintiolini. Welcome to the introduction to Islamic calligraphy. Throughout this course, you will be introduced to the beauty of Malay calligraphy, which is basically a modified form of Islamic calligraphy. Because this don't be. It is actually quite simple. Generally speaking, the Malays follow the Islamic faith and Malay cultures are very influenced by many aspects of Islamic philosophies. This is especially apparent in visual art forms such as calligraphy, which you will learn about here. This course is designed for those with an interest in this art but have never tried learning its final points. As part of this course, you will learn about the background of Islamic calligraphy and some basic techniques on how to write your own. We will be covering four learning outcomes. By the end of the course, you will be able to first, introduce the concept of calligraphy, secondly, explain the history of calligraphy, thirdly, identify the types of calligraphy, and lastly, demonstrate the finest of calligraphy writing according to the right methods. Come and join us on this interesting journey to gain new knowledge and skills. Okay, so that is the that is the trailer video for uh, this uh, uh, So, uh, every course will need to produce one trailer video. Okay, so uh, whether it's um, uh, pharmacology, whether it's um, uh, 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 engineering, whether that's medical medicine, whether that's arts, uh, so you will uh, have to produce one 
play the video and we would like it very much if uh, you yourself as the educator appear on the video okay? so so ada will provide us with a makeup artist <laughs> 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 okay, so um, the, the technical help will come from um, uh, PKM, so uh, they will uh, obvious, uh, obviously will have that. Uh, but we also have our um, uh, team, or if you um, uh, sort of have uh, somebody who is really really good at um, doing shooting video, probably your, your, your faculty have your own media team, you can have them to, uh, uh, to help you produce that, that the intro uh, video, isn't it? Okay, so uh, let's look at um, uh, different uh, items that I wanted to show before you uh, com continue with the uh, uh, exploration of the MOOC course. Okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, the mechanics of um, uh, future learn, uh, the course inside future learn, you'll find that so this is actually uh, how uh, we would design the course. Yes, so you will have uh, weeks. Okay, so this course is actually three weeks. And within those three weeks, there are 15 steps, learning steps in week one, two, 12 steps in week two, and then uh, 37 steps in uh, week three. Okay? So let's look at week one. Okay? So uh, those, um, how many uh, 15 steps, uh, 20 steps are? then break broken down into the different activities. So activities can be uh, units if, if you want to translate or map it with your course. So getting started, there are six uh, different steps. So in there, okay. So you have um, one video, um, uh, four, Articles and one. What is the I? Oh, uh, discussion. Okay, one discussion. Okay, so uh, the cards that you have. Okay, so these are the guidance for you to design those uh, steps. Okay, so at the back you'll be able to see what kind of activity uh, that uh, the the learners will do. Okay, so that is uh a simple uh, mechanics of how uh, the learning is designed into uh, the course and it's very uh, it's quite simple it's very easy to follow okay and with the help uh, of our instructional designers at the back you'll be able to then uh, formulate the kind of learning uh, uh, experience that we want to design for both our learners and also our students Okay, any question? Like that? Okay, so let's move on to um, uh, how, how long are you? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. okay. So use the remaining uh, time to go into the drop box paper. Okay? So uh, remember uh, my uh, the task that I gave you just now. Go into any um, course uh, on future learning and uh, uh, note uh, and go through the learning and know what you like about the course. What are the features uh, and activities that you want to adopt? Okay, and what are the things that you can improve from the course that you are uh, going through to be added into your course? So, uh, we have these 20 minutes, just go through any uh, of the bus and then I will just uh, go around and uh, have a conversation with you guys. Okay? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Farah, for very uh, time to work with me. Uh, okay, so uh, as part of the exercise, um, I want you to uh, write a comment on the course that you are looking at. I've um, gone through the, the, the few tables and I've come across a very few, few very exciting uh, discussions with regards to the courses that you have uh, looked at. So, to, in order to make sure that everybody can benefit from that discussion, uh, could you please go to the uh, Dropbox paper? 
Okay, and uh, write about the um, uh, the courses that you have. So that then uh, everybody here will be able to look at uh, and uh, learn from uh, the discoveries of uh, your colleagues, the ones that they made. Yes. So uh, one example, uh, Doctor Apa nama dekat uh, biology? Shakirin. Huh? Shakirin. Shakirin. Doctor Shakirin uh, find this uh, really exciting course on genome. Genome. Okay. But then um, uh, in one of the uh, learning step, uh, the the authors, uh, uh, although they clarified, we got um, most of the information from Wikipedia. But I would say that um, it would not be um, to our standard to uh, do that, isn't it? Uh, yes, they, they, they did cite, but then uh, you have to tell me it's Wikipedia, come on. You copy 100%, copy paste. Uh, so we want to uh, make sure that uh, we get the lessons from that to, to that, so that then we we make uh, or we produce high level, high quality uh, content. Okay. All right. So please come uh, share your findings in the Wikipedia uh, in the uh, in the drop of paper. So that then uh, everybody else can also benefit. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, Nabila. Sorry, just regarding the Wikipedia entry, um, I, I'm not, I haven't seen the course or that or anything, but there is a possibility that the person who actually created this course also uh, created right. the Wikipedia entry. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you end up doing that, say you really created your course and you kind of want to also share it by Wikipedia, you may want to actually write somewhere in your course that you contributed for you yeah. created the Wikipedia page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will also increase your citations mm -hmm. for the course. Okay. All right. So, um, yes. Actually, I'm also experienced my uh, part of my work. So, put in Wikipedia, not by me, but uh, people who uh, took my part into Wikipedia okay. because of this of uh, our peer research. Yes. So, I mean, uh, you can always write about it in the, the course, saying that uh, actually this uh, Wikipedia article is, comes from my research, isn't it? So, it, it clarifies that. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, for everybody, uh, thank you for indulging a bit. So let's uh, give this session back to Farah. Okay.